you know, I've actually had a career in music now. It's, it's like another way of saying you're old. But I mean, I've had a career in music. And, and a thing that, that you end up hanging your hat on, I find myself hanging my hat on by having a career in music, are these relationships with special people that you didn't necessarily think of as being particularly valuable at the time or, or whatever. They're just the people, your peers and cool people to be around or somebody who's obviously talented and you're magnetically attracted to that and want to learn every, you know, be amongst it. And, but those are, that's a neat thing to kind of now reflect on, you know, as having done it. And Doug Sachs was like a really special person to me. He was like, he took me under his wing, but he was a legend, you know? And I, I wasn't very good. I was trying to make records in my basement. I had subpar equipment and I wasn't an engineer. <laughs> so I had a few stumbling things against me. And I'd take my very first record into him to be mastered. And he basically, you know, he, he goes, this is really musical. I really like, he's really good to me. But he gets to the end of, of the, the little four hour process and he goes, he goes, what do you work on? And I told him my equipment, he goes, you need some real equipment. He goes, your stuff would sound a lot better. But he goes, you're musical and your stuff is really musical, like good. He goes, you're good. So just keep at it, get better gear. I go, okay, <laughs> you know, like, and so I would call and get his advice about things and stuff. And in reverse, well, I mean, one thing they did at the mastering lab, he had a little thing he called the key club. And if you got invited to be in the mastering lab key club, you got a key to the mastering lab, to his mastering place. And you could come in anytime you wanted and he showed you where the switches were. It's only a couple of switches. You could power on and listen to stuff. And, and so I could go to the mastering lab at three in the morning with a mix I was tr thought was good and I wanted to know if it was really good. And I could go in and listen on his setup. Yeah, no approval, lights, power amps, and listen. And there was maybe 10 people who got that. And he invited me into that really early on. He's like, I wanna hear you get better. I remember I brought my second record to Doug and he goes, hey, a lot better, a lot better, you're listening. And I go, yeah, yeah, I took what you said about the this and that. I came down and listened one night. He goes, oh, he goes, oh, I wondered about that because he goes, somebody left the door more locked than we lock it. I go, I wanted to make sure, you know, but like, and then in reverse, uh, he would even do these listening shootouts where he would invite four or five, all like famous people and then me. And he'd invite us down and we'd wear blindfolds and we'd listen to different things and then we'd write down what we thought or we'd have specific questions and stuff. And he'd do this kind of stuff sometimes once a week. It's just really a neat, person and it was really special that I you know got invited in by him you know I've always appreciated that once I got enough sense I learned I, I knew to appreciate that and with that sometimes you, you'd kind of learn his gear preferences they'd have modified LA-2As that were the perfect an LA-2A with this you know perfected element that they didn't do stock things like that Doug uh, or like the you know they came up with the crossovers for the Tannoy Super Golds and this crossover and amp pairing thing made that made that an incredible speaker right they they decided they were going to make a better C12 at some point microphone and they took C12 capsules and started experimenting with that and one day Doug calls me he goes he goes hey do you want one he goes we've made a prototype of this C12 mic that Steve and I are trying to work up and make. He goes, would you take it and listen to it and see what you think and give us notes and stuff? And I go, absolutely. And that was this. That was this strange <laughs> thing built into sort of a Radio Shack body. But it's a C12 capsule with their perfected mic pre, or power supply, I guess you'd say, but it's a mic pre too. And it has a tube in the mic body, which is very unique. C12 doesn't do that. And then it, the tube has to be powered, so it's just like a whole, I don't know. But it sounds like a C12, but even more uh, articulate on the upper mid-range and high frequencies, especially sort of the upper mid-range. It's just amazing on female voices.
really amazing. So I gave him notes on that, and he said, well, you know, why don't you just keep that one? That's for your notes. I go, okay, thanks. You know, it, uh, I think when they finished and really did the real ones, they didn't do this, but this one has, you know, you can attenuate. You know, it's your mic pre, so you can attenuate the mic. You can use it with a, another pre, though, if you want, by going direct, and then you don't get their mic pre. So that was pretty useful, too. But, but it's really, a, you can use it like you use a C12, which is female voices is where you start with C12s, I think. But, uh, and it's a real C12 capsule. I think I said that, but I'm saying it again. It's a real C12 capsule, but then it's got this extra tube kind of concept going. It's good.